All right, reading data part A. Um, starting right off with number one, it said John runs at different speeds as part of his training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times during the workout. Which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing? So that's the important part of this. Strictly increasing, then strictly decreasing. So his heart rate is over here on the left. So looking at the graph, it looks like we have strictly increasing, strictly decreasing. Um, it's going to be right there between 40 and 60. So the correct answer here is B. Um, if you look at part A, it says between 0 and 30. Well, between 0 and 30, you know, it increases, but then it flatlines. It just maintains. And so that's not increasing, then decreasing. Every other interval is going to have a situation like that where um, it's not going straight up and then coming back straight down. Number two, rooftop solar panel. The number of rooftops with solar panel installations in five cities is shown in the graph above. If the total number of installations is 27,500, what is an appropriate label for the vertical axes? So remember, vertical, they're talking about the up and down axes over here um, of the graph. Notice these numbers are just single digit numbers, and we're trying to get 27,500. So it looks like, and it says that the total was 27,500. So I think these numbers over here are going to have to be in thousands for it to total up that much. So I think the correct answer here is going to be C, because that's the only number that's going to give all five cities a total of 27,500. Number three, we have a, a graph here of media players. Uh, this question says, according to the line above, the number of portable media players sold in 2008 so that would be right here on the graph, um, which looks like it's about 100. Um, is what fraction of the number sold in 2011, which appears to be 160? So what fraction of? So 100 out of 160. And that's way too many um, numbers to put in. This is an open-ended question. And remember, there's only four slots for these. So this, this one would actually require 7 because you'd have to input, you know, 1, 0, 0, 1, 6, 0, plus the slash mark. So you're going to have to reduce this down. Um, dividing both of them by 10 gets me to 10 over 16. And then if I chop those both in half or divide by 2, I'm going to get 5 over 8. So the correct answer there is 5 eighths. Number four, according to the line of best fit in the scatter plot above, which of the following best approximates the year in which the number of miles by air passengers was estimated to be 550 billion? So I'm going to go up here to the graph, and it looks like um, 550 billion is this line right here. And that is approximately somewhere around in there. Now looking at the horizontal axis, it looks like that each line represents five years. So this line in the middle right there is 2005. So we're a little bit before that, so I'm guessing maybe 03. So the correct answer there would be C. All right, number five says two samples of water of equal mass are heated at 60 degrees. One sample is poured into an insulated container. The other is poured in non-insulated. They're then left for 70 minutes in a room cooling. <clears throat> the graph above shows the temperature at which each sample at 10 minute intervals. Um, which of the following statements compares the average rates? So let's just kind of look at the graph first. If I'm focusing here on the on the insulated, just kind of put that in blue. Um, it looks like the blue drops pretty quick and then kind of levels off a little bit. Um, and then when I'm looking at the non-insulated, okay, the dots, these drop even faster and then they kind of start leveling off sooner so they're pretty flat kind of down here <clears throat> so that's kind of what's going on with both of those so let's go down and let's look at at the potential answers here part a in every single 10 minute interval the and they gotta be careful whenever you see these words every um that usually is is an indicator that there might be a situation where it doesn't always happen so be careful when you see that word uh, the magnitude of the rate of change, so the slope, 
of the temp of the insulated is greater than non-insulated. So is the insulated always greater than the non-insulated? Well, let's kind of look. Um, I don't think this very first interval, you know, from 0 to 10, it looks like the non-insulated is dropping more than the insulated. So I think A is out. Part B says, in every single interval, the magnitude of the rate of change of the non-insulated is greater. Well, I think over here, when you look at these intervals, um, the non-insulated is pretty flat. There's not much change. There's actually more change up here on the insulated. So I think that one's out. Part C, from 0 to 10 and 10 to 20, the rate of change of the insulated is bigger. And then 50 to 60, non-insulated is bigger. So is that true? Is the rate of change of the insulated bigger? I do not believe so. I believe from 0 to 10, the non-insulated has a greater change. So in part D, from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, the rate of the non-insulated are greater magnitude. I believe this one's true. So the correct answer is D. All right, moving on over to number 6. <clears throat> the line in the XY plane above represents the relationship between the height, H of X. So be kind of careful here. Uh, H of X is really the same thing as Y. So this side is representing our height. Um, and the base diameter for the columns in ancient Greek architecture. So X over here, this is the diameter. So this one's a little tricky because they don't give you, uh, they don't label the axes. So big question here. How much greater is the height of a column that has a base of 5 feet rather than a column of 2 feet? So we're comparing the bases of 5 and 2 and we want to know how much greater. So let's kind of go here. At 5 feet, the height is 35. So 5 feet diameter, we have a height 35. And when you're looking at 2 feet, 2 feet diameter base has a height of 14. Um, so then it says how much greater. That's our key word, how much greater. So we need to subtract those two. Correct answer is C, 21. All right, moving on down to number 7. Jake buys a bag of popcorn at the movie theater. He eats half the popcorn during the first 15 minutes. <clears throat> After eating half the popcorn, he stops for the next 30. Then he gradually eats the popcorn until he spills the remaining. Which of the following represents the situation? So we're looking for a few key things here. We're looking for um, he eats half the popcorn during the first 15 minutes. So, you know, situation A, that could kind of happen because it looks like he's you know eats quite a bit right in the first 15 minutes. This one eats quite a bit in the first 15 minutes. Um, this one, somehow the amount of popcorn is getting bigger. So that one's out right out of the right out of the gate. Um, part B looks like he eats about half his popcorn. So we still have A, B, and C are all kind of alive here. So let's just kind of keep those in play. The next part, after eating out the popcorn, he stops eating for the next 30 minutes. So that means the, the amount should remain unchanged. Well, this little stops eating doesn't quite look like it goes for a full 30 minutes because each increment down here is 15. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mark A out. Um, C looks like he stops eating. And B looks like he stops eating for 30 minutes. So I think we still have B and C going. So then he gradually, gradually eats the popcorn until he spills it. So if he gradually eats the popcorn, this is showing that more popcorn is be being put into his bowl, like somebody's giving him some. So C is out. Here's where he gradually stops eating it, and then he spills it really fast. So the correct answer is B. All right, number eight here. Pretty long question, so I'm going to kind of shrink it down so we can see what's going on. It says the insect count for three pesticide treatments. Um, three colonies of insects were treated with different pesticide over eight weeks. Colonies A, B, and C. So right here, if you kind of look at this chart, you can see that A is kind of the gray, B is the white with the dots, C is the really dark bars. Um, 
and it was done over the course of eight weeks. So you have week zero, two, four, six, and eight. So the question is right here in the middle. So there's a lot of reading before you actually get to it. Which of the following colonies showed a decrease in size every two weeks after the initial treatment? So we're going to have to kind of look at these one by one. So let's kind of focus first on uh, colony A. Well, colony A went from 80 down to about close to 50 to 30, getting even smaller, getting even smaller. So it looks like A definitely shrunk every single week, the gray bars. Um, so I know for sure that 1 is in the mix. So that means I can eliminate B, and A, C, and D are still fair game. So let's go and let's check on uh, colony B here. We'll do these in red. So B is this bar, this bar, getting smaller, getting smaller, barely, but still getting smaller, getting smaller. So I think that B also gets smaller every single time. So that includes number two. So we st so that wipes out A. So we still have C and D. So now we got to see about colony C. So looking at colony C, it starts here and then it got bigger and then smaller, smaller, smaller. So we have a problem. It did not get smaller every single week. So we know that three doesn't work. So the correct answer here is C. All right, number nine. Of the following, which is closest to the ratio of the total number of insects in week eight to the total number of insects in the initial treatment? So what I need to do for this one is I need to set up a fraction. Um, and I need to do the total from week eight compared to the total from week zero. So we're going to scroll up here to this top chart and I'm going to kind of get rid of some of the stuff up here so that we got a little bit more room to work. And so let's try to add up these totals. So looking at week eight, um, I'm saying that colony C is, I don't know, somewhere around 50. It's probably good enough. Colony B looks like it's somewhere around 10. And then colony a there is almost 20. Let's just call it 20, see if we're close enough. So that would be 80 for week 8. Now if we go back to week 0, um, it looks like colony A would be 80. B would be, I don't know, a little over 60, maybe 62. C is pretty close to 60, maybe 58. Probably could have just used 60 for both of those. So 80, 60, 60 is around 200. So 80 in week 8, 200 in week 0. So we have 80 over 200, which if I cross out a couple zeros there, that's 8 over 20, which is 4 over 10, which reduces all the way down to 2 over 5. So correct answer there is A. Number 10 says Maryland's hike, and we're looking at the distance from the campsite and times of the day. So the graph above shows Marilyn's distance from the campsite during a three-hour hike. She stopped for 30 minutes to have lunch. Based on the graph, what is the following the closest time she finished lunch? So ultimate goal here is what is the time she finished lunch and then continued her hike? Well, looking at the graph, the period of time where she wasn't um, getting further or closer away from the campsite was right here. So that must have represented her lunch time. And if we kind of peek at the chart, it looks like it's going to be somewhere between, you know, 1 and 2 o'clock. Um, so the time closest to when she finished lunch and continued her hike. So that's going to be right about here, which is past 1.30, probably looking at about 1.40. Correct answer there would be C. All right, number 11, the graph shows the total number of music of album sales back in the day, 1997 through 2009. Uh, one thing to notice on the chart here is that the bottom is labeled, whoop, wrong tool, the bottom is labeled um, that it's years since 1997. So notice when they kind of come over here and they start at zero, this year right here is 1997. So 10 years later, which would be this point, would represent 2007 and at the end of the graph there would be 2009. 
So based on the graph, which of the following best describes the general trend from 97 through 09? Well, it kind of looks like, if you're peeking at the graph here, it kind of looks like we increased right there about three or four years in. And then we kind of start this steady decline coming down. So I'm looking for something that increases then decreases. Um, so part A, sales generally increased each year. No. Sales generally decreased. Maybe. Sales increased until 2000, which remember 2000 would be right here. So that's kind of our, our spot. Uh, and then decreased. I think C is the best answer because it's a little bit more descriptive. Um, D, they remain steady. That one's not out there as well. So the correct answer here is C.